Xeranolone mycotoxin is, um, that's made by the fusarium fungi. So it's a mycotoxin actually made by that level of mold. And it's in the food and it's in the, in the, the animal feed. And that animal feed is designed to fatten those animals up. So I have one kind of study here. It's called Xeranolone. It's all the study is called by Science Direct. And it's looking at the absorption of xeranolone on body weight and how it increased the size of the pigs 15 to 25 kilograms. And basically it increased body weight. And then one of the big things they found with xeranolone in reproductive tissue, it actually decreased fertility as one of the side effects of this study. I'll pull up the exact study on screen here in a minute. I have it up here in front. I'll find the exact paragraph on there and I'll show it to y'all. But Mold toxins is going to be one of the big conversations here with fertility. Now we can plug that into xenoestrogens and plastics. We could potentially plug it into pesticides as well, which are going to be found in food. Uh, we can plug it into growth hormones and in milk and dairy and hormones and animal products. The problem is it's all a hormonal stress load. It's not just one thing. So when you look at different studies on one topics, on one thing, on one toxin, on one hormone, on one mold, you know, it may not be enough in one person or globally to pop up as an issue. I mean, here we're finding studies on it off the bat, but we know it's all about your stress load. And so I want to get people's mindsets kind of around that stress, that metaphorical stress bucket and all of these different toxins, whether it's mold or pesticides or hormones or plastic type of hormones, they're all adding into that big stress bucket. And of course, fertility is going to be significantly impacted by that. Yep. Well said. Here's something crazy too. It's a little bit related. You and I were looking at this a little bit ago. Uh, the onset of puberty is massively dropping. So why am I bringing up puberty? Well, because this is connected into hormones and what's happening with hormones. So in 1860, and you had a graph of this, that was really cool too. But in 1860, the average age of onset of puberty in girls was 16.6 years. So over 16 years old, 16 and a half years, 1860, that's puberty. In 2010, it is now 10 and a half years old. That is insane. And that's probably the most, I mean, I can guarantee you that's the most rapid change in puberty age in, in human history. And it all happened oh, in the last, and it all happened in the last, what's that about 100, 150, 170 years. That's insane, right? Isn't that crazy? Oh. I'll pull that graph up here for everyone to see here. So you guys can see it. I think that's now, really important to visualize. Yeah. Now, while you're doing that, they're just talking here, just like you said, there's this really this stress bucket. So endocrine disruptors, various chemicals in the environment acting on hormones, uh, widespread industrial and pharmaceutical pollutants. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, diet that's increasingly high in sugar and fats, declining physical activity. Yeah, here's the graph. Mm -hmm. So people listening, you're not going to get to see this, but the graph is pretty nuts. Yeah, so you can see here the, um, the y-axis, the up and down axis. So you can see the age, right, 16 to 15. And then you can see the X axis is time. So as we go from the 1860s up to current day, you can see we kind of flat plateau between, you know, 13 ish, 13 ish for puberty age versus, you know, 15 to 16. And a lot of that has to be influenced due to mold toxins in some. So here's one article here that Evan talked about here, maternal mycotoxins. And again, mycotoxins are toxins produced by the mold. So a lot of times, it's not necessarily the mold that's causing the problem. It's the toxins produced by the mold. So it's good to look and test for mold, but also test maybe for the urinary mycotoxins as well. But you can see exposure and adverse pregnancy outcomes. And, and this is a very interesting study talking about um, increase in puberty, uh, increasing in puberty age, like I mentioned, also fertility, right? Preterm birth, late miscarriage, inclusion of some evidence that exposure to mycotoxins during pregnancy may have detrimental effects on pregnancy outcomes. Now, of course, there's limited studies, right? No one makes a whole bunch of money studying this kind of stuff, but we know it's, uh, it's there and there's some data already on it. And we also have a lot of common sense. We know if something's a toxin and can affect the hormones, that it makes sense why that may be affected. 